Hey guys, Spirit of the Lie here. In this video, we're gonna be taking a look at the Chakram Thrower, how good it is, and how it stacks up compared to existing ranged melee infantry already in the game. This is the Gurjara's Castle unique unit, and visually, I think it's one of the cooler units that we have. It brings me back to a fun scene in Tron Legacy, so I love this unit immediately. We'll start with its stats head-to-head -head against a couple of established ranged infantry units, giving us some precedent for game balance. Their stats initially don't look that impressive, with half the attack of the Gabetto and similar HP, while being much less tanky than the Throwing Axemen. What's more, from a total resource perspective, they're actually the most expensive until you grab their Castle Age Unique Tech to reduce their food cost, which suggests you're paying a premium here for something not reflected in their stats. That premium, of course, is for their special ability. Their attack works similar to a Scorpion, where they deal full damage to a unit they target and half the regular amount to any other units that their projectile happens to pass through. Against a single target, they end up looking pretty underwhelming when looking at their closest comparables, needing the most attacks with all Castle Age upgrades to bring down a Long Swordsman. On the flip side, as units begin to stack more and more, that can start to double or even triple their damage output. That's helped especially because despite having 5 tiles of range, the Chakram can be seen here damaging units up to 8 tiles away. As you'd probably expect, it's upgraded like any infantry, with barracks and infantry blacksmith techs, and as mentioned earlier, Gujaras have a unique tech to reduce the food cost of their military units by 25%. That brings its food cost down from 65 to 49, and part of its high food cost may be baking in the assumption that you pick up this tech fairly early. In Imperial Age, their elite upgrade also gives them a bit more HP, attack, and one more range. Considering their low HP and armor, I think the range increase is the most impactful, as it keeps them a little farther away from the action. So what kind of role can they perform, and also what are their counters? The big role I see right away and is mentioned in the tech tree is against infantry. Gurjaras are a cavalry and camel sieve, so pikemen are automatically going to be a very common unit that they see. The chakram thrower gives you an option against especially mass pikemen, where the more units they pile up to counter your camels and Trivamsha riders, the more effective your chakram throwers become at dealing damage. You can see here they actually do quite well even without micro, with roughly equal starting resources in castle age. On the other hand, archers are a little more debatable, as they have greater range and in most cases should leverage that into being a good counter. But assuming they get too close, with equal resources even on staggered formation to prevent pass-through damage, the Chakrams come out on top. This fight was actually pretty fun to watch, and almost looks like the Chakram throwers are bowling at a couple of different moments. As ranged infantry, of course they perform very well against skirmishers, avoiding their pierce armor while not taking any bonus damage. Instead, it's anti-infantry units, like cataphracts, that they really have to watch out for. In fact, cavalry in general can give them a tough time. Unlike infantry and archers, cavalry tend to have relatively high HP, especially heavy cavalry, on top of a bit of melee armor. You can help yourself out by keeping your units moving and focus firing, but generally this isn't a matchup they're really cut out for, which is fine considering Grajaras have very good camels. In contrast, a much better matchup is against rams and especially buildings. These situations are a big advantage that ranged melee units have over archers, as both of these targets have very high pierce armor. I've said it many times before, but having a quickly created melee unit at the castle can also be great for protecting yourself against surprise ram pushes, and more damage against buildings always adds an extra dimension to the threat you can put on another player's town if they're unwilling to engage you head on. Overall though, I have to say I'm a little nervous about how easy it's going to be to pull off this unit in practice. It's not particularly cheap for infantry, which right away makes it hard to mass, and of course it also requires at least one castle, while having not an especially fast creation time at 15 seconds. While that is in line with the Gabetto and Throwing Axemen, I would say this unit relies more than those others on having a large mass, as its individual stats aren't going to take it very far in small numbers. Initially, I wanted to categorize it in my mind as just a reskin Gebetto with a twist, but in my limited time playing around with it, I just don't get the sense they're perfectly comparable. For me, the best examples of using the Gebetto I've seen have been in Raiding and Hit and Run. It's a fast unit that packs a lot of punch, and I've seen it completely turn games with annoying small groups that use speed and melee damage to snipe Siege for example, while taking almost no damage in return. Chakram throwers on the other hand move in between a throwing axeman and Gebetto, while not having the tankiness of the axeman to hold up in large chaotic fights, which can threaten to make it an awkward in-between unit. Gurjaras with their food discount tech also have cheaper hand cannoneers and cheaper elephant archers with extra melee armor, so it's just one of several decent range support unit options that you have against mass infantry and low HP units. 
I'm hoping the Chakram Thrower's melee damage and resilience to anti-archer units like skirmishers allows it to find some good situations and use in practice, as like I said, I love the look and concept of the unit, and certainly in large numbers, its pass through damage can really add up quickly. That's all for this one though, thanks for watching guys, and I'll see you next time.